Hi there, and welcome to our lesson on US government and politics as part of your politics A-level syllabus. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite 30 markers, which is assess the powers of the vice president in US politics. And hopefully when you see our content on the next page, you'll agree with me that it is very well linking together. It's very straightforward, all about one person. So if you get this one in the exam, you'll be good to go. Um, but just before we start, let's talk about some things we need to remember when writing our 30 markers. So let's remember to present our ideas clearly. When we say the vice president does this or the vice president is this, let's do one point per paragraph and let's make sure that what we're saying is significant about it or is you know assessment worthy about it is very clear. Uh, don't forget your counter arguments. Now this is an important one for 30 markers because as I'm sure you'll have been told by your politics teacher, um, these things are these questions are difficult to answer if you don't address the sort of the counter argument to your point maybe why this isn't so significant so don't forget that link back to the question now this needs to happen every single time you write an exam like this and i'm sure you'll have been told this as well but every at the end of your little paragraph link back to the question say and this is why and and this is why this is significant a, a significant power of the vice president or this is why it isn't and the final one is you've definitely heard this one before but examples 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 hopefully you've been following american politics over the past couple of months while you've been studying it but absolutely no worries if not we've got some really good examples for you on the next page and we just need to remember to try and use the example that best fits and the more recent the better you know, even if the, you know, there might be a historical example that really works, in which case use that. But if we can show that we're keeping up with American politics and we're using our knowledge, that's really good. So let's move on to our content. So I've just got some difficult concepts down here. Um, and when they come up in the text, feel free to stop me if you need a little explanation. I'm going to try and go through them as through the content. But there's just some things on here that you might not have come across before, and that's absolutely fine. And what I'm also going to do down here is I'm going to make sure that when we go through the content, we've got some better or more examples for these points. Because, as I say to you, the more modern it is, the better. And also there's some on here that I think that we could do even better with. There's some, especially in the rebuttal section here, that we could have a few more. So we're going to do that when we go through. So let's get started then. Uh, assess the significance of the vice president in the US government. Now, if I were to ask you what the what you thought of when you think vice president, hopefully some of these points on the side here, points one to five, hopefully they would, they're the sort of things that would come to mind. So taking over from the president, uh, being like a the yin to the president's yang in, in terms of politically, or maybe advising the president. And all we're going to do here is try and put this into academic format and make sure that we've got a good essay out of it. So let's start with point one, the VP taking over from the president in death, resignation, removal, and illness. Now that might seem um, that might seem obvious to someone who's uh, studying American politics. You might think, yes, of course, that's what happens if the president goes. But let's think about this. This is quite significant. Being the second in line is quite significant. And I've just put on our difficult concepts down here, the 25th Amendment, and that's going to come up again just here. So that is from 1967 and it is the thing that allows the vice president to become president in the event of any reason why the president can't fulfill his duties so you know death resignation removal from office etc and we've got some examples here so president johnson took over from kennedy when he was shot and killed in 63 really tragically when we have to have uh, linda johnson take over when he was Kennedy's vice president. And also there's a couple of instances here in June and July of 2002 and 2007 respectively, uh, Vice President Cheney took over from George W. Bush after um, he was receiving some medical treatment. So you might say, yes, this is quite significant because without the, the, being the second in line to take over as commander in chief is a, a really important part of the vice president's job. However, if you wanna say, that you know maybe the, if you want to start rebutting this and remember we've got to we've got to have something that counteracts uh, our point it let's let's be real it is quite rare that something like this happens um you to have a president not finish his term has happened very few times in history um for example we've only had one resignation which was uh, richard nixon in in the 70s and also something i want you to know is that it's the president's discretion 
whether they give up their power. And I want you to try and remember Trump's COVID-19 treatment in 2020. So what I mean by this is you might remember when President Trump caught COVID during the presidential campaign in 2020, um, and he actually chose not to give up his power to Mike, to Mike Pence, his vice president, even though there was a chance he could have been incapacitated. So you might say, ah, oh, well, that lessens the significance as well. Let's move on to point two, balancing the ticket. Now, again, this is on the difficult concepts list. But I think this is, once you remember it, is is fairly straightforward. So when the president runs, he chooses someone to be his vice president. And that is the presidential ticket. It's, you know, the president at the top, vice president underneath. And balancing a ticket means that you might choose a vice president who is a little bit different to you politically, or maybe a lot different to you politically, um, to, uh, to sort of make up for things that maybe you, make up for qualities that you maybe don't bring. So, um, there's some examples here of Barack Obama. He's very young. He was a black man, obviously, our first black president. Um, and he was quite inexperienced. You know, he'd only served one term uh, or half of a term even in the Senate. So he chooses Joe Biden, who is much older, had been in the Senate for a long time and seems to be more experienced. So that was that was his choice there. However, you might say that after the election, is there much point? You know, do you need a balance ticket after the election? Now, let's just update our examples again. So do you know who Joe Biden chose as his vice president? Yep, that's right. So Kamala Harris is Joe Biden's uh, vice president. And she also sort of balanced the ticket as well. Because Bal- Kamala Harris is um, more left wing than Joe Biden and she's younger, and she uh, sort of fixes some representation issues as well, Um, because she is obviously a a black woman as well. So this is another example that you could use for uh, bouncing the ticket. Now, this is an interesting one, the vice president as the president of the Senate. So constitutionally, this this is the proper role for the vice president. They oversee the presidings in the Senate. And that's uh, what's down here with tie-breaking power and the president of the Senate. Um, So they oversee the Senate, they're in charge of proceedings, and they can actually decide ties. So Vice President Cheney cast eight deciding votes, and Vice President Cheney just cast a deciding vote on the Jobs, Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act, which is a big mouthful, but that was one of George Bush's uh, sort of landmark economic legislation. But again, we want to go more modern than that, and we want to look what's happened in recent years. So Kamala Harris has actually used her tie-breaking power 26 times because of a 50-50 Senate between 2020 and 2022. And she also cast a deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which was last uh, last year, um, which is really important legislation for Joe Biden. However, if we want to rebut this, we can say the VP rarely presides over the Senate, and only if there's a 50-50 split really would the vice president reside over the Senate, and they choose a president pro tempore, which is Latin for the time being. It's really straightforward. And also, uh, you know, sometimes the Senate isn't 50-50 split. So poor old Joe Biden, he actually cast zero deciding votes in his eight years as vice president. Now, this one is an important one. The v- and we're going to try, we're going to tie point four and point five together because in an exam, you might not have time to make five points. So the VP advising the president. So the VP, think of them as a very good advisor to the president because they're politically, you know, they're very tied together and they can help each other with the workings of Congress and they can help each other with certain foreign policy areas. And a VP might have their own policy area, like we've got in point number five here with Al Gore. He was very passionate about the internet and therefore Bill Clinton put him in charge of technology. But both of these points depend on the knowledge, the experience and the strength of character of the VP. So we've talked a lot about Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney was able to advise Bush because Bush was relatively inexperienced. He hadn't really held political office before. Where Dick Cheney had been in Congress for a very long time, he'd been... um, on like foreign policy committees in the house so that was why he was able to advise bush um on things like iraq afghanistan guantanamo bay as we can see down here um but in the case of hubert humphrey for he was lyndon johnson's vice president um he was 
less experienced he had uh, a sort of a lesser character than Lyndon Johnson sort of in, in the way he presented himself you might say he wasn't as big as a figure so this is um this is important as well you might say um you know you might say well can someone who's less experienced um advise the president who is more and we might say this about Kamala Harris because while she's a senator as well, Joe Biden has been a senator for a long time, a lot longer, uh, and is much more experienced. So this is a really quick overview of the powers of the vice president. I wish we had more time to talk about it and we could really get into the nitty gritty. But I hope, for, I hope that you've got the, the brief overview of the powers and the rebuttals. And I hope I've been able to give you some more examples. And I really look forward to talking about this in more detail with you again. Thank you so much.